Welcome to Kingdom Worship Center. On behalf of our pastors, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, thank you for choosing to worship online with us today. Our service will begin shortly. Join us for New Year's Eve service on December 31st at 7 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and kwc.online.church featuring dynamic preachers and speakers like Dr. Vicki Johnson and others as we conclude the 2020 year and gear up for 2021. Couch Conversations with Bishop G returns for its winter premiere on January 7th at 7.30 p.m. with a brand new look and a brand new twist. You do not want to miss it. Streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? If not, grab your phone, your tablet, or laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. God loves a cheerful giver. COVID-19 has not diminished the church's desire to be a beacon of light in our local community, but rather it has magnified it. Join us as we continue to make an impact by feeding the hungry and being a very present help for those in need. Please consider giving right now by using one of the methods listed on our screen or by going to our website, www.kingdomworshipcenter.org backslash giving dot html. It's time for our leadership training, January 30th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Our theme for this training is building the team for our kingdom assignment supported by our theme scripture from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love Ephesians 4 and 16 this training is for leaders and influencers that means this training is for you you are a part of this team that we are building Sign up today to attend either in person or virtually by using the link on the flyer or you can email Dr. Shaw at mshaw at kingdomworshipcenter.org and the link will be sent to you. Thank you for joining us online today. We look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Have a blessed week.
Join us for New Year's Eve service on December 31st at 7 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and kwc.online.church featuring dynamic preachers and speakers like Dr. Vicki Johnson and others as we conclude the 2020 year and gear up for 2021. Couch Conversations with Bishop G returns for its winter premiere on January 7th at 7.30 p.m. with a brand new look and a brand new twist. You do not want to miss it. Streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? If not, grab your phone, your tablet, or laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. God loves a cheerful giver. COVID-19 has not diminished the church's desire to be a beacon of light in our local community, but rather it has magnified it. Join us as we continue to make an impact by feeding the hungry and being a very present help for those in need. Please consider giving right now by using one of the methods listed on our screen or by going to our website, www.kingdomworshipcenter.org backslash giving dot html it's time for our leadership training january 30th 2021 from 9 a.m to 1 p.m our theme for this training is building the team for our kingdom assignment supported by our theme scripture from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. Ephesians 4 and 16. This training is for leaders and influencers. That means this training is for you. You are a part of this team that we are building. Sign up today to attend either in person or virtually by using the link on the flyer, or you can email Dr. Shaw at mshaw at kingdomworshipcenter.org and the link will be sent to you. Thank you for joining us online today. We look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Have a blessed week. Join us for New Year's Eve service on December 31st at 7 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and kwc.online.church, featuring dynamic preachers and speakers like Dr. Vicki Johnson and others as we conclude the 2020 year and gear up for 2021. 
Couch Conversations with Bishop G returns for its winter premiere on January 7th at 7.30 p.m. with a brand new look and a brand new twist. You do not want to miss it. Streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? If not, grab your phone, your tablet, or laptop and search Kingdom Worship Center Media and hit the subscribe button. God loves a cheerful giver. COVID-19 has not diminished the church's desire to be a beacon of light in our local community, but rather it has magnified it. Join us as we continue to make an impact by feeding the hungry and being a very present help for those in need. Please consider giving right now by using one of the methods listed on our screen or by going to our website, www.kingdomworshipcenter.org backslash giving dot html. It's time for our leadership training, January 30th, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Our theme for this training is building the team for our kingdom assignment, supported by our theme scripture from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. Ephesians 4 and 16. This training is for leaders and influencers. That means this training is for you. You are a part of this team that we are building. Sign up today to attend either in person or virtually by using the link on the flyer, or you can email Dr. Shaw at mshaw at kingdomworshipcenter.org and the link will be sent to you. Thank you for joining us online today. We look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Have a blessed week.
Don't worship or take. The Son of God is lifted high. 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 Just like this. Lift you up, Jesus. Let's... It's real simple. Just repeat after us. The Son of God is lifted high. 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 Hallelujah. The Son of God is lifted high. And we say, Oh, oh, wonderful and glorious Jesus. Hallelujah. And his name is Son of God. Hey, the Son of God is magnified. Yes, Lord. Yes, the Son of God is magnified. Yeah. Yes, the Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Yeah, yeah, sing out. Sing wonderful and glorious. Sing His name, Jesus. His name is powerful. His name is wonderful. Son of God, be lifted higher. Sing it again. Sing oh. Hallelujah. Your name is wonderful, Jesus. And Jesus. Hey, Son of God. Hey, hey. The Son of God is glorified. The Son of God is glorified. The Son of God is glorified. Yeah. Yes, the Son of God is glorified. Son of God, sing oh, hallelujah, wonderful Savior and glorious, yes, your name is Jesus, hallelujah, wonderful counselor of Jesus, Son of God, sing oh, sing wonderful and glorious, was it is What's in his name? There's healing in that name, Jesus. Sing, oh, oh. Sing, wonderful Jesus. Yes, your name is Jesus. Hey, Son of God.
God, Son of God, sing Son of God, Son of God is lifted high, 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 hey, the Son of God is lifted high. Y'all can have it, take it for Jesus, your name is to be lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Yeah, yeah. Come on, help me say, Son of God. The Son of God is lifted high. Hey, all over the world, yes, you're lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Sing, Son. Son of God is lifted high. Son of God. Yeah, Son of God. Take it, take it. Hey, come on, take all some God. Awesome God is lifted high. Yes, my awesome God is. Yes, awesome God. Sing mighty God. Yes, almighty God is lifted high. Yes, almighty God is lifted high. Yes, mighty God is lifted high. Say faithful God. Faithful God, say faithful God. Yes, He's a faithful God. Yes, She is. Yes, He's a faithful God. Yes, He's a faithful God. He's kept me through danger, seen and unseen. He's kept me through danger, seen and unseen. Faithful God. Faithful God, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seen them begging for bread, because God never changes, he's the same yesterday and today, hey, his faithfulness changes now, all that I've needed, thy hands have provided, so great is the faithfulness. Yes, great is the faithfulness. Yes, morning by morning, morning by morning, morning by morning. New mercies are seen because you've been so faithful. Every morning I see brand new mercy because you're faithful. Yes, faithful God. Yes, we live to have faithful God. Yes, we live to have. Yes, we live to have. Yes, every knee shall bow. And every tongue God. Yes, that, that Jesus is us Christ. Hey, faithful God. Yes, he's a faithful God. Faithful God. Yeah. Faithful God. Awesome God. The faithful, I'm feeling faithful God, faithful God, faithful God, faithful God, faithful God, all year from January to December. 
Remember, you've been faithful. Their ups and downs, ups and downs. You've still been God, and we thank you for your faithfulness. Faithful God, faithful God. Many dangers, toils and snares. We have already come. Faithful God, you've been a protector. You've been a provider. Faithful God, faithful God. Morning by morning, new mercies that I've seen. Morning by morning, new mercies I've seen. Faithful God. Faithful God, faithful God, faithful God, that's what we call you, faithful God, never leave me, never forsake me, never leave me, never forsake me, never leave me, never forsake me, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, you've been a faithful God. 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 I can't let you go. Yes, you've been a faithful God.
with you in everything that I've needed. If I needed grace, if I needed mercy, yes, you've been a faithful God. Faithful God. It's a faithful God. It's a faithful God. 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 Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Answer prayers. Answer prayers. Yes, you have answered prayers. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Faithful God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We say, we say, we say, we say, we say, Hallelujah. 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 At the end of it all. Just play, just play. Now 
just express all of your worship. Yes, we love you, Jesus. For your faithfulness and your kindness and your mercy and your grace. Woo! For just being God, for just being God, for being holy, for being holy. That means you never change your character. That you're a man of your word and that you did exactly what you said that you would do. So God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sing. Sing, Lord, we love you. Lord, we, Lord, we love you. Yes, Lord, we. we do with our whole hearts we love, we love you because you're first of us Lord, we love you. hey yeah Lord, we love you. one more time come on come on hallelujah Lord, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, we say hallelujah, we say hallelujah, we say hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, Thank you, love we thank you, love it. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you. Lord, I love you. Oh Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. Could have been another way. Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord, I love you. So God, even times in this year where we moved away from you, you kept us close. So God, we thank you, Lord. Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. What is our response to a faithful and great God? Hallelujah. 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 What can we say? Oh, no words to say. Oh, no words to say. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. the best.
best English word I can say, the best word I can say. And it's the same in every language. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. We thank you for being the sovereign God that you are. There's none like you in all of the earth. You're faithful. You're an awesome God. And we love you so much. We pray, God, that as we go through your word for the next couple of minutes, that you will lead us and guide us into your truth. For your word declares that we shall know the truth and that the truth shall make us free. So God, we pray, Lord, that as we go into your word this morning, that your truth, truth will be so evident for us. Thank you. 
for bringing us to this point. Here we are, the last Sunday of 2020. And God, all we can say is thank you. There have been dangers seen and unseen, but we have thank you, Lord. You've been so faithful to us. God, we've lost a lot, but we've gained even more. So we say thank you. Thank you, God, for teaching us and showing us, even in hard and trying times, how faithful a God you are to us. You have increased our capacity. Hmm. Hallelujah. You've caused us to see you in new light, with new eyes. You've changed our perspective. And for that, we're grateful. Now speak to us. We're your servant, we're here. Let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, kingdom of God. God bless you, kingdom family. So glad that you are with us this morning. Uh, the Lord has certainly been faithful to us, um, and I'm so glad that we're here in this last Sunday. We praise God for our worship team this morning, leading us in such an awesome time of worship. Um, thank God for you, the people of God, who are streaming with us this morning. God has been good to us. He's been good to us. Um, we can definitely declare that it's God um, because there's nothing we could do to deserve, to earn, or even to have or to be situated where we are. We can only attribute this to the goodness of the Lord. And so um, I'm so grateful this morning. I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, it is the 27th today of uh, December, this last Sunday of 2020, and I pray that everyone had a fantastic uh, Christmas and that you did the best that you could to make sure you were staying safe and healthy uh, during this time. Um, and I pray, matter of fact, let, let's do it now. And Y'all know me well enough already. Let's do it now. Uh, because there have been some who have been named as sick amongst us uh, who had uh, uh, the coronavirus and who have been stricken uh, ill during this season. And, and if you find yourself in any place of illness this season, as hospitals have been increasing in their numbers, you've found yourself to be a little bit more vulnerable. So let's plead the blood of Jesus just for a moment. Hallelujah. I wish I had somebody right now. Father, we thank you so much because we declare that healing is the children's bread. We thank you so much, God, for being the God who heals all of our diseases. Thank you for being a God who's able. Thank you for being a God who understands the infirmities of our bodies. But you don't just leave us there. God, you touch us. So God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for everyone under the sound of this voice this morning. We pray, Lord, that not by the sound of Greg Dennis's voice, but by the sound of the voice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That healing would be released. Hallelujah. In the believer's body, in the name of Jesus. I pray healing. Hallelujah. To those who have been stricken. I pray strength to those who have found themselves in a place of weakness. I pray God deliverance to those who have been in a place where they see themselves bound. I pray liberty to those who have been oppressed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We believe this to be so. And we declare that every promise in the Lord. Hallelujah. Every promise in you is yea and amen. And we believe it to be so in Jesus name. Amen, 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 amen. I'm excited to be with you on this Sunday, and um, I'm not going to be before you very long, but I, I want to, I, I wish that we were here together. I miss, uh, as you know, I've said it every Sunday since March of how much I miss us, us being together in person, and we've had times and opportunities where we've had um, uh, some services that have been um, uh, situated so we could have some uh, audience here with us, um, but I miss you. We miss you, those of us who are here, but I want to thank God as we are here for the faithfulness of um, our production team, and y'all just in the chat or wherever you are, just put a God bless you, praise the Lord, and who has made sure that though uh, we have not been able to uh, gather together as we typically have, they have assured us that we cannot forsake the assembly of the saints, 
And so we've been in this place where we still have been able to assemble together, and that's been because of those who have been able to help us, our production team, our worship team, our band. Uh, they've been here every step. Uh, we've even had nurses and uh, security that have helped us uh, to make sure that everyone has been able to uh, be present and that you've been able to receive uh, ministry from your house. I pray that if you've been streaming with us throughout uh, this year, why don't you join Kingdom Worship Center? You ought to become a member of the church in this season. Guess what? You don't have to join and live next door to us. In this season, you can be a part of Kingdom Worship Center because what we do as ministry, you can always find virtually as well as in person. So won't you become a part of Kingdom Worship Center? We would love to have you. Have you? We are a great church, and we're getting better all of the time. And so we welcome you to be a part of Kingdom Worship Center. I want to I get into the Word. Before I, before I get into the Word, there's just something, uh, Terry, that I was looking at. You know, I always got to have to find somebody to talk to. Uh, and so uh, there was something I was looking at. And when I was looking at I looked back at some of the subjects that we've preached uh, through 2020. And while looking at some of the subjects that we've preached, there is a common thread that is actually happening in the lives. Uh, we preached one Sunday, and this one was a, uh, for me, was a powerful Sunday. Uh, but one Sunday, we preached a message called New Rivers. We talked about God cutting new lines, new streams, the fact that there was a place where God was going to cut out for us a new path, a new design that God was going to do. We talked about a power shift, good God Almighty. Uh, another Sunday, when we talked about that, we were talking about how God was causing us now to be able to shift to a place that would propel us further than we've been before, be able to pick up speed. We even use the analogy during that time of a car that when it downshifts in a gear, that then that's the opportunity to pick up speed. And if you're in danger, you can also down, downshift to begin to slow down. Good God Almighty. So we talked about some of the shifting that was going on in our lives, but the shifting was for power reasons. Oh, Lord. Uh, we also talked about having a kingdom mindset one Sunday. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to go through all of them, but we also talked about kingly vision. Some of you remember kingly vision. We talked about having vision not from a normal perspective, but what God is doing is he is situating his people to have a different type of vision upon their lives. You don't need to see things the way everybody else does. You have been situated as king and priest. Come on, y'all. Y'all, am I in this word? I'm in the word. He has called us to be kings and priests. You are peculiar people. And so your vision ought to be a kingly vision. You ought to see things not in the way that everybody else sees it. You ought to see things from as a king, as who God has called you to be, as somebody who is attached to royalty. So you don't just, uh, what overwhelms some doesn't overwhelm you because you have kingly vision. We also talked about how to live in glory. Good God. Uh, uh, we talked about how to live in glory. I'm going to just, uh, instead of talking about each one individual, let me just throw some of them out. We talked about decisions. We talked about displacing of darkness. We talked about uh, what happens when light comes, that uh, actually darkness has no opportunity when light shows up. It just can't handle light. Good God. Uh, that darkness automatically becomes displaced whenever light decides to arrive. Good God. Uh, we also talked about uh, making room, making room for what God has for us. We talked about uh, the fact that we are moving to a different place that God has for us, and we need to begin to cause there to be space in our life for what God is going to release. Boy, I hope I, some of y'all, I, I don't know which one was some of the messages that you enjoyed, but I'm enjoying a little bit of the recap right now. <laughs> uh, and it's funny because I never know what I preach. Um, but we also talked about, uh, we talked about doors being open in heaven. We talked about storms. Somebody remembers the Sunday we talked about storms. And, and then when we talked about storms, the peculiar thing about it is when we read through the text in the book of Psalms, we realized that the scriptures declare that God made the storm. Good God Almighty. He was the orchestrator of the storm. So it was God intended, but God, even though God intended it, he intended it to cause us to be propelled propelled. And so we talked about that. We talked about the great reversal. Uh, some of you remember that message. Uh, we talked about God's plan. We talked about God's purpose. 
We talked about that two particular Sundays in a row because we kind of got stuck on his purpose versus our purpose, the things that we're always looking for. We always want to find out what is it I'm supposed to do? What is it I'm purposed to live out? What is it that God wants me to do? I'm searching for my purpose. And we talked about how the irony of when we look for our purpose, how it causes so much conflict and friction in our lives and tension in our lives because it becomes a place where we just can't figure things out. But it's because we're not called to live out our purpose. We're called to live out his purpose. Good God Almighty. Uh, so we talked about that. We also talked about one Sunday, the spirit of the Lord rested, rested upon us uh, during service. And we talked about uh, the aligning glory that God was causing to happen. And we came out of uh, first, uh, Second Corinthians 1 Corinthians 15, and we talked about uh, uh, in that verse passage of Scripture where it talks about there's a glory of the sun, a glory of the moon, and a glory of the stars also. But we talked about how God was causing those glories to be situated in a line. And if you look in the book of Romans, you find out that the Bible talks about how the, the light that you will receive will not be from the sun's light, neither will be from the moon's light, but the new light that you walk in will be from the glory. Good God Almighty. Uh, so we talked about that aligning glory coming into our lives. We also talked about uh, get me out of here. When we talked about get me out of here, we were talking about our own flesh, our own intention. The fact that if I'm get so caught up in me, uh, I'm going to mess some things up. So get me out of this particular equation and cause God to enter in and God's plan and God's will and God's purpose and get me out of this particular occasion. Last thing, we, then we talked about as well, a righteous recount. Oh, God. Uh, when we talked about a righteous recount, we talked about what actually happens uh, when God tells you what he already did. <laughs> that he's certifying, he's certifying that I'm not changing my mind about you. Good God Almighty. And that you can go back and count over, you can look it over, uh, you can determine whatever it is that you want to. What you're going to discover is that what I said has already been established. <laughs> what I've declared is coming to pass. Count it as many times as you want. Good God. Look over it as many times as you have to. The truth of the word is that let the word of God be true and every man be a lie. Good God Almighty. Uh, so we talked about that with the righteous recount. And then this past Sunday, we then came to you. We talked about out of obscurity. We talked about how God is calling those obscurity, which means that which is unknown, that which is in a place of darkness and dimness, and, and how God is causing those places to be used for us to propel us to who he's called us to be. Now, after telling you everything we preached all year, I guess I should have nothing less to say, because that should be enough for us. Y'all, I, I, I mean, facetiously and seriously at the same time, like how they say sorry, not sorry, is like that should be enough for us to really walk on, live on, have a victorious life right in the midst of that. And, um, and this morning, as we go through, I want to I visit this out of obscurity again, just a little bit of it. But I want I want to call your attention attention to an Old Testament passage of Scripture. Lamentations. Lamentations. Lamentations is a book that uh, I remember when I was in seminary, they said preachers don't preach from. Uh, it's one of my professors said. And the reason she was declaring that is because in Lamentations, there's so much stuff going wrong that it gives you very little to preach about. That it identifies so much with heartache and pain that it's hard to then cause people to be encouraged as you look through the book of Lamentations. It is the book, of course, of lamenting. The great thing, if you remember during our time of consecration in the month of October, there was a particular study we asked you to research, uh, of course, in your personal time and space, that talked about lamenting and the blessing of lamenting. The blessing of lamenting is that in our prayers of lament, 
there is automatically a confession of the power of God. That you do not lament to God without recognizing that God is actually in it. If you have prayers of lament, if you've got problems in your life, if you've got trouble that's shown up at your doorstep, if you've been broke any time in the last 52 weeks, if you have found yourself sick in the last 52 weeks, if you've found yourself in a place where you're disappointed or your soul has just been uh, tied in knots in the last 52 weeks, the book of Lamentations says it's okay because God is still here. I like, I was with Archbishop recently in a service, and I will not dare try to re-preach a sermon that he preached, but I almost wanted to do a backflip just at the subject that he preached. He preached a message called, Why? And he asked the question in, in this subject, the question that he posed to us was, why doesn't God always answer us or respond to our why? He went through so many scriptures and he talked about all of these questions that have been given to the Lord and, and he even gone through his own childhood account where we talked about how we were taught not to question God. Some people, even though we're not of that day anymore, but some of us recall those days of you don't question God. He talked about coming from that generation of not questioning God, but then still reading in Scripture that there are those who question God, but God didn't always respond, didn't always immediately give them an answer to why. (laughs) Good God Almighty. Uh, when we look at Lamentations, I want to take you to the third chapter. Lamentations chapter 3, let's read verse 19. Lamentations 3 and 19, it says, <laughs> I love this. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the warm wood and the gall. Was she saying, remembering that which was toxic and poisonous and unavoidable. It was misery. Good God Almighty. It was an affliction. And it was all mine, Lord Jesus. And so the writer here says, remembering all of that, my soul have them still in remembrance. I can't shake what happened to me. (laughs) I can't shake. And it comes a season. Y'all, let's be honest for a moment. We go through seasons where we can't shake what's happened. And a lot of times when we can't shake what's happened, we find ourselves in a place where we try different things, sample different things, look for solutions in different places because our soul is being reafflicted by our memory. Y'all could call. And, and it's amazing when you gotta go through something. But doesn't it become compounded when you can't stop thinking about it? <laughs> when you can't get off of your mind what was done to you. When you can't get off your mind the offense, when you can't get off your mind the pain, when when you can't, when every time you feel like you just got over it, here comes something to trigger that trauma all over again. And it seems like you keep having to live it over and over over again. God, it would be one thing if I just had to go through it once. Yeah. But it seems like because of the way I'm wired, y'all, good God, that sometimes I've got to relive the pain that I had. (laughs) And God, I'm tired of having to relive it. And what we have done, y'all, that help me talk to you, what we've done to try to avoid this is we have relocated. We have gotten divorces. We have remarried. We have uh, changed churches. We have changed jobs. We have broken up. We have, uh, we have changed our numbers. We have, uh, we have canceled culture. We have created. We have deleted Facebook friends. We have 
gotten off of social media. We have gotten back on social media. We changed profile pictures. We don't have a profile picture at all. All of this because we're tired of remembering. Tired of remembering. God, my memory has been tormenting me. <laughs> Woo! Oh, this is one of the things that happens in the book of Lamentations. It's not just that I went through, it's that I can't stop going through it. Good God Almighty. It's that it doesn't stop living with me. And my question to you, Lord, is when will this stop? When will this stop hurting? When will this uh, stop causing me pain? When will this stop causing me trauma? When will this thing stop feeling so bad? Mm. Uh, uh, God, I need this thing to stop. It seems like it always continues. Uh, and uh, that's just the reality of where we are. It's just the reality of where we are. And some of us have sat in front of our psychiatrists and our psychologists, and they've given us tools, and, and we've tried our best to use every tool in the bag. And we, we sat with a pastor, and we use all the pastor's tools too. Uh, we, we, we see something that triggers, and then we start quoting scriptures. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And it doesn't stop the pain. Y'all could go. <laughs> oh, I wish I had somebody who would just tell the truth. And it doesn't stop the pain. And, and what do you do when the pain won't stop? What do you do when the pain doesn't stop? Let me, let me, let me, let me I want to help you. I want to help us by letting you know that God has designed us very intentionally. You have been made by God, watch this, so that your soul would remember. Yeah. It's how you were created. You were created to remember. And you were created to feel it again. Y'all could, Lord. You were created this way. It is God intended. Y'all could. It is God intended. So the same thing you told little Terry when he was a little boy, that not to touch that stove. And when he touched it and discovered it was hot, God put inside of him a memory that would remember hot, that would remember pain. So he would also remember the stove. Y'all could be. And that he would remember what the stove did. I'm so sorry, y'all. And that he would remember not just the pain of it, but he would also remember to avoid <laughs> at all costs. Good God. Woo. It's hurt you once. Oh, God, I feel like preaching. Uh, let me stay seated. It's hurt you once. Did damage to you twice. But tell your neighbor, say, it won't happen again. It won't happen again. I've been through this thing uh, time and time again. And I need to let the devil know. I need to let the enemy know that I recall enough about you not to give you entrance into my space one more time. All right. The other thing that happens, uh, the other thing that happens in this text I'm in here with the band and the worship team. The worship team and band making me feel like I'm preaching a little bit. Hallelujah. But the other thing that, let's, let's read the text. If we read the text, it helps us. It helps us. Verse 20, of course, says, My soul hath them still in remembrance. Who, what is that that has it? My soul. My soul is where my emotions, my will, my intellect are all still engaged with what has happened. Mm -hmm. This I recall, verse 21, to my mind. Now listen, hear this. This I recall to my mind, which means now I'm speaking to my soul. <laughs> I've got self-talk happening here. 
this I recall to my mind. I, I know there's some things my soul remember. But I won't let my soul do this by itself. I begin to speak to my own soul and tell my soul, you need to recall some things. Good God Almighty. Ooh, God, put your glasses back on so you can see. Uh, it says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. What? Hello, Jesus. My soul's been busy. But I'm being busy at the same time. I'm intentionally, y'all could not, counteracting the activity of my soul to make sure that my soul won't lose hope. Y'all could, God, uh, okay, all right. Let's read the scripture. It says, uh, it says, this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. Because I'm remembering something, and what I'm remembering is that it is of the Lord's mercies. <laughs> yeah. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Y'all could. And I'm, I'm sorry, and you know like I know that mercy for us becomes a judicial word. Which means there is a verdict that should have been cast. Good God. But it's because of the Lord's mercies. It is because he is the judge that is on the throne. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassion, y'all couldn't God, fails not. Another translation of his compassion fails not. Huh. Carolyn Devon Tribune Brewer <laughs> is that his compassion doesn't have a place called in. They don't end. They don't stop. There's no place called complete. There's no place called finish. There's no place called over. Good God Almighty. Ha. And so understand this, that if his compassions can't stop, it means his mercies will always continue. Y'all, good Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Verse 23. Just a little Bible study. The Bible says, at the crack of the day, the Bible says, at the break of every dawn, the Bible says, at every new waking moment, <laughs> I'm going to give you brand new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For they are new, good God Almighty, they are new every morning, and then the articulation then comes, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. The writer then pins these words, James Evans. Uh, he says this. It says, the Lord is my portion. No, wait, y'all. The Lord is my portion. I just came from my soul being retormented by triggers and habits and seeing people with the same face acting the same way, using words I heard before, words I heard in crucial situations. I know some of y'all never lived through this, but you keep on living. All of these things, and in the midst of all of this, now the writer begins to pin <laughs> Great is your faithfulness. Are you confused? Good God. I wish somebody would just type in a chat box somewhere or whatever or say, I am not confused. <laughs> because he is not the author of confusion. Good God Almighty. So I'm not confused with this. I'm realizing that if I tell myself, if I speak to myself, 
who he is and what he's capable of, I will not be subdued by those things that have happened to me. Why? Because the scriptures say in the New Testament that these things that have happened to me have fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel. Oh, mm. okay. Mm. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, Will I hope in him? The Lord is good to them. Watch this. That wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. Mm -hmm. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I ain't making no noise. <laughs> I ain't making no noise. What you up to? I ain't making no noise. I'm just waiting for God to finish doing what God has gotten started with. Good God about it. He is the alpha and he is the omega. He is the beginning and the end. Just sit. Come on. Just tell your neighbor, just, just sit and wait. Just sit and wait. Just sit and wait. Wait here quietly because if you wait on the Lord, and be of good strength. He will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, just so you know, if this message seems extremely short this week, uh, Terry told me to only be 10 minutes. Uh, so, uh, but he said he got that from someone. Uh, so, I, <laughs> I don't know who he got it from. I hope it wasn't his house. I'm praying it wasn't. Okay. Um, But I, I need you, here's the thing that I want you to do. I want you to look again that in verse 20, I've got a soul problem. Mm -hmm. Right? In verse 20, my soul has remembrance. That's where I find my soul. But then in verse 24, mm -hmm, where I find out that the Lord is my portion, my soul, therefore, will hope. So my soul changes its mind based off of the sermon I preach. Y'all pray. My soul will change its mind based off of how I speak to it. When I begin to determine in myself, I need to recall some things. I need to recall that he's faithful. I need to recall he's consistent. I need to recall he's got an abundant amount of power. I need to recall that all power belongs to God. I need to recall, recall that he makes ways out of none. I need to recall there's some things about God I need to recall. I, don't, I just won't let my soul remember. I begin to speak to my soul and say, mm, don't forget this. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Lord. Okay. So, so say all of this. Now, now I, I got to come back and preach another Sunday. To you. So, I'm going to cut this really short. I'm going to cut this short. And, but I'm going to say this. When you go to, when you go to Colossians, the third chapter, let's just turn there. I hope I don't end up preaching another sermon right now. Uh, but when you go to, it's probably quick if I just, I think I already had it pulled up on the, on the uh, oops, not if I close it, on the eye. And you go to Colossians 3. Yep, there it is. It says in verse 1, If ye then be, been, if ye then be, it's too many words, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on the things on the earth. Lord. Your one of the easiest ways for what we remember to have a great impact on our life. 
play something soft for me, please, Terry. Is that if we only remember that, then we don't set our affections on things that are beyond this present situation. There's a scripture, oh God, that says, I think I wrote it down somewhere. I hope I put it in the notes somewhere. It is John 3 and 31. John 3 and 31 says to us, He that cometh from above is above all. And he that is of the earth, hear this, is earthly. I love that word. He that cometh of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. What are you saying, Bishop G? Why did you add that passage of scripture right here? I added this passage of scripture to the message because in order for us to really cause our souls to be in a place of victory, we have to recognize that our souls have only been talking of earthy stuff. Oh, Lord, let me say it again. Your soul has only been preaching to you, talking to you, bringing back to remembrance, not things that are above. It only brings to your remembrance things that are earthy. And so who you are called to be, who is in Christ, and when you are in Christ, it means you are above. You are not to continue to be focused on earthy but you need to set your affection on that which is above. Your soul can cause you to be so troubled if you're thinking too low. Stop thinking so low. When I say low, I mean as if this is it. This is not all that there is. I'm we did a, a call, a prophetic encounter the other day. Darian hosted a prophetic encounter. And Archbishop said something. If you, didn't, you couldn't tell by now, Archbishop is one of my major teachers. He said something during the call that just really triggered something in me. I don't know if it did for everybody else who watched the prophetic encounter online or not. But he talked about how when we always talk about who we're called to be, how we always use the dominant type of posture words. You know, above, not beneath. I am strong and mighty. Uh, God has given me dominion. And I love all of that. But he talked about, he's, he's talked about how nobody mentions this about being meek and lowly. <laughs> nobody, nobody talks about being humble. Mm -mm. Humble is like, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, yeah, I'm humble so that I can get glorified. <laughs> I'm, I'm humble for a purpose. I'm humble for a reason, right? Uh, but nobody, nobody talks about the other components. But it's a sign to us that we've allowed some earthy stuff to creep into our spiritual stuff. When we don't honor the full gamut of what God is saying about. See, we want to be, we do want to be as wise as a serpent. But we don't want to be as harmless as a dove. <laughs> and that's the tension that we're commanded to be in. The tension says, be wise as a serpent, but also be as harmless. And see, it's hard for us because when we see serpent automatically, we think harm. So we don't think necessarily wisdom, right? We don't think being wise, serpent. But when you, if, if anybody, I had, oh my goodness, this year, since we had so much time at home this year, I did a lot of yard work this year. And one day I went out back in my yard to move some stuff, and you won't believe what I found under those two-by-fours in my backyard. 
I said, if I tell Tanya, she's going to make us sell a house. I can't even tell her. The house is going to be for sale. <laughs> I moved those pieces up. It, it was two by four um, the studs, the steel studs, actually. And I moved those, and them jokers just started. I said, woo! <laughs> and I ain't going to lie, they weren't that big, but it was big enough for me to back up. I said, oh, hey, go. I said, go ahead. I got a rock. <laughs> Like, okay, you ain't gonna bruise my heel. <laughs> I throw a rock at you though. Um, but but I looked and and what I found in, in, in recalling that, what I'm trying to make sure is that it knew how to know where I was without me knowing where it was. Y'all. And sometimes people of God, hear me, I'm talking to some people right now who've been situated in position for what God has called you to be in the earth is that sometimes you got to make sure that though you know what you're up to everybody else can't know Lord Jesus because you got to operate in wisdom they can't know that just you're being positioned for a kingdom takeover they don't they don't need to know that you're that you're positioned here so that lives can be changed for the glory of God they don't they don't need to know all those details you just go ahead just be wise stay sit Watch the salvation of the Lord. And then when they come to you, refuse to bite. Y'all could. <laughs> Woo! Refuse to bite them. Be as harmless as a dove. Hallelujah. Be as harmless as a dove. I'm praying for us. Did I put a subject to this message? I don't know. All the mother, use all the messages of all the subjects that I gave you, put all those together <laughs> and make that the subject. <laughs> we'll put something together. It'll be something online. Who knows? But I'm praying for all of us. I'm praying that your soul would hear what you have to say. That the ears of your soul would be open to the articulation of what you intend to recall about God not recall about the situation what do I remember about God do you see I hope y'all see do you see the difference in that because most of us we try to recall the situation stop remembering the situation what do you remember about God Woo. Woo. Lord I feel like saying that can I say that one more time what do you remember about God what do you know about his faithfulness? What do you know about his commitment? What do you know about uh, his mercy? What do you know about his love? What do you know about his compassion? What do you know about his steadfastness? What do you know about his power, his might, his strength? What do you know about, I couldn't call about it, the love of the Lord? What do you know about the way God can resurrect someone from the dead? What do you know about God? What do you know? Bring that to mind and watch your soul Make her boast in the Lord. Woo! Did you hear, you hear what I have? That as you recall what you know about God, your soul changes what it's remembering. And it says, I'll make my boast in the Lord. And the humble will hear thereof and be glad. And they'll magnify the Lord with you. And we'll exalt his name together. All right. I've said enough. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness towards us, your love, your compassion, which never fails. Thank you for what you're doing in our life. Now, God, where there have been no ways, make a way. Give us your peace, which surpasses our understanding. God, we declare this morning that we are not focused on the things that have happened. Not as if we're gonna walk in some mismanagement or we're not zombies on the earth. We know what's happened. But our affections are on that which is above. And we speak to our soul and we say, peace be still. And we glorify you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please make this last Sunday of 2020 the day where you give God your heart. Romans 10, 
9 and 10. It's a passage that is very easy, just a scripture that you ought to pray just for yourself. It says very simply, it says 10, 9, and 10. Where's, there it says, it says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I like this. I like verse 11 too. It says this. I like a lot of scriptures, but verse 11 says this. For the scriptures said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Whoever, oh, that's a whole nother, maybe we'll preach that next week. It says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Another word there, if you understand the Greek language there, here's another word to give you that. Shall not be disgraced. <laughs> Woo! Shall not be disgraced. Oh God. Lord Jesus. Carolyn and Terry, y'all get y'all get mess me up. Oh. oh. I invite you to be a part of what the Lord is doing in this season. Don't let it escape you. Don't let it escape you. Don't let it get by you. Don't let this world speak louder than the promises of God. Don't let this world speak louder than what you know about God. For God I live and for God I die. Please join us even in giving this morning. And I'm asking that if you would sow a special seed you know, I've been wanting to end the year with a special gift for all of those who have helped us in ways that we've never required or requested help before. And we've got to find a way to be a blessing in their life. So I'm asking that you would help us. Now, I've asked this probably for the last two months, maybe, that you would help us with this. And so, but I've never said what. So this last Sunday of the year, let me just give you, just in case you don't know. Do me a favor. For those of you who can, if you could sow an extra $50 seed, $50, just sow a $50 seed to Kingdom Worship Center and mark it on whatever app that you use for giving or your checks or your envelopes if you're mailing your, your giving. Mark it for the production. Just put production. Uh, and if you don't know how to pro spell production, just put P-R-O. <laughs> And after you, you do that, and if you cannot give 50, I want every though. I was going to say if you, don't, if you can't give 50 to give 25, but can, let me, can I say this? Do your best to try to give 50. Get as close as you can to help us to be a blessing to those who have been a blessing to your house. And we thank you for it. Again, I pray that your Christmas has been blessed. I pray that you've enjoyed, enjoyed your time. Keep your mind on that which is above. Set your affection on that which is above. God bless you. Have a tremendous Sunday. In Jesus' name.